All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, Larry Wheels is back at it again, this time with the heaviest incline dumbbell press ever performed in history. Um, so his first attempt, 500 pounds, so 250 pounds each is what these dumbbell weighed, dumbbells weighed, and he got that for two reps. Now the second attempt, were 275 pound dumbbells each, 550 pounds of total weight. He got that for one rep, but he got that one assisted. The spotter helped him towards the end of the lift there to help him lock it out. But still, the 250s and the 270s are both the heaviest ever recorded incline dumbbell press. What do you guys think about Larry Wills' latest PR? And I guess you could call it an unofficial world record in terms of the incline dumbbell press. So shout out to Larry for not letting us down and always having a interesting PR for us to talk about. And I actually thought his form here was pretty clean and pretty smooth um, on the 250s at least comparatively to the last time where he did the uh, 220s. So big ups to Larry Wheels. Now next up in the news, Big Rami. Big Rami posted some stories on Instagram today. Now that we know he's preparing for the Europa Spain in two weeks, Big Rami's been showing a lot of cardio. He posted this video of him doing cardio where he's dripping sweat. You can see his face is super sucked in, super dry, super death face going on there. Big Rami is certainly putting in the work heavy cardio in his preparation for the Europa Spain. And that is going to be what Rami needs to do because as you guys know, we all want to see Rami come in with crazy condition. It's the same old tune that we've sang for the past Five years now, we want to see a conditioned Big Rami, and the question remains, will we ever see it? We've seen him in decent shape, but will we see him in fantastic shape at the Europa Spain? And I think he's going to need fantastic shape to walk away with a victory at Spain. I don't think it's going to be easy for Rami at Europa um, to win the show, that is. I think it'd be easy for him to get into the top three there. But for him to beat some of the other guys in this lineup, we're going to need to see a really good version of Big Rami. And hopefully, if he does make it to the Olympia, which I'm predicting he will, he's I'm pretty certain he's going to be top three at this Europa show, and he will get the Olympia qualification that way. Hopefully, we will see an improved version of Big Rami at the Olympia this year. And I know we've said that multiple times, but maybe one of these years it's going to happen. And the question is, if this year is the year, how do you think Big Rami will place in the Olympia lineup 2020 with good conditioning this time. Great conditioning this time. Not just good. We want to see peeled Big Rami. Shredded Rami. Ripped Rami. Not just Big Rami. And this Spain show is going to give us a preview pretty much. Um, we're very close to the Olympia now. This is just going to be a preview of what we're going to see from Rami basically at the Olympia. Now also in the Europa Spain, let's not forget, you've got a lot of other big name guys in there. You've got Rafael Brandau, and you've got James Hollingshead. James Hollingshead on Redcon 1, they posted a physique update of him today where he looks incredible, and he's weighing in the 270s. He is no small bodybuilder. He's not that much smaller than Rami, to be honest, in terms of sheer muscle mass on his frame. And this is what I'm saying. A guy like James, with the size that James has, he can push a guy like Rami. Because, look, he's weighing in the 270s, like I said, but look at that grainy quality to his physique, the vascularity, the condition that you can see even in gym lighting, no tan, weeks out. He's got that grainy quality, and that's something that Rami very rarely has had. And if James comes in with really grainy, crazy conditioning and Rami comes in with not so good conditioning, James could beat him. I mean, it's possible. So this is a make-or-break show for Rami. This is by no means a walk-away victory. And Rami just took third at the Arnold Classic this year. When a lot of people, including myself, were expecting Rami to win that show, Rami, in my opinion, cannot lose this show. He needs to win this show. If he places in the top three but doesn't win the show, I don't know if he would want to go to the Olympia without winning a show. And you talk about conditioning, another guy competing in this lineup, Milan Sadik, he posted a full posing video um, about a day ago, 10 days out from the Spain show, showing off some conditioning at 10 days out. Not the biggest guy in this lineup by any means, but again, conditioning is very dangerous, especially in a lineup like this. And of course, we've already talked quite a bit about Rafael Brando, another guy who is a favorite in this lineup. Rafael posted a physique update today too. Looking fantastic. An angle that we haven't really gotten to see of Rafael yet, a side chest pose. You can really see how round his shoulders and his pecs are. You can see how good his conditioning is. 
Raphael is extremely dangerous here as well, and I think, again, Rami is not going to have that easy of a time in this lineup. Raphael is looking great. Milan is looking great. James is looking great, and you can't forget about Regan Grimes. Regan Grimes posted a video on his YouTube, I think it was yesterday, um, where he's hitting some curls, some strict curls even at that, and you can see while he's doing those curls and getting the pump that he's getting, you can see how good of shape that Regan's in as well. The vascularity that he's got all throughout his upper body, the striations in his chest, the vascularity in his arms, you can really tell that Regan is going to be in shape at this Spain show um, just based on this training footage leading up to the show. So this Europa Spain is certainly going to be a battle, and it's not going to be an easy one for anybody to win, and I am really looking forward to it. And everyone that's been asking me, I'm not sure if there is going to be a live stream or not, but I will keep you guys posted as to whether or not there is and where you can watch it if there is one. Now, next up in the news, your 212 Mr. Olympia runner-up from last year in 2019, Derek Lunsford. He posted a series of training videos to his Instagram page where he is looking absolutely massive training for the 212 Olympia this year, taking another shot at that title. Um, a lot of people, like I said before, had him as their heir to the throne of Flex Lewis. A lot of people expected him to win last year. I thought he was going to win last year, uh, but he missed the mark and he ended up in second. But this year, he's trying again, and he's looking very impressive so far based on what I've seen. His arms just look huge. I mean, he's got a crazy upper body. He's got a crazy back. One of the criticisms that has been um, his main criticism so far is the lower body kind of needs to catch up with the upper body but as far as his back goes he's got one of the best backs um, in 212 period his arms look insane here and I think he's going to uh, hopefully be a serious threat for the title this year if he brings the conditioning to the level that he needs to bring um, to defeat your defending champion Kamal El Gargni this year now next up in the news Hadi Chupin posted another training update on his road to the Olympia this year training legs hard and heavy as you can see, his preparation for the Olympia has not slowed down at all. With the caption, a dream does not become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. Now, I guess this is his friend, Parsifar Mahdi, who posted um, a lot of these updates of Heidi lately. I guess he films for him or whatever, and he posted this picture, um, which is crazy impressive. I don't know if it's recent or not, but he has a good point. He says, the highest level of cut at the highest professional level in the world Mr. Olympia belongs to an Iranian. If you if you are proud, write a sentence for him, showing off the insane separation in detail that Hadi has or had in preparation for last year's Mr. Olympia. And he's got a good point. I think Hadi was one of the most conditioned guys there, and I'm assuming that's what he means when he says the highest level of cut. And if Hadi brings conditioning like this or better to this year's Mr. Olympia stage, I think Hadi has to be considered as a threat to the top three again even with the new names that are added this year. Obviously, he was top three last year, but now you've got Phil, you've got Flex, um, you've got more names in that mix that are possible top three guys. But I think Hadi is more dangerous than people honestly give him credit for. And I think there's a real possibility that he could be challenging the top spot. As a matter of fact, give this video a thumbs up if you agree with that statement, because I think Hadi is extremely underrated, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of people this year with where he places and some of the names that he beats this year. I think people are going to be really surprised, assuming that he does make it to the Olympia. It was kind of controversial last year if he would get to the United States, but he made it happen, so I'm assuming they're going to make it happen this year um, by whatever means necessary. Now, next up in the news, WWE superstar Braun Strowman, a.k.a. Adam Shear. We know he's prepping for a men's physique competition in the NPC. He posted a full physique update today, working on his posing, assumedly for men's physique. He says this video was recorded first thing in the morning with his body weight sitting at 349 pounds. And he wants to compete in men's physique, weighing over 340 on stage. So that's something I'm certainly looking forward to seeing. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below about how the beef shed, as he says in the uh, location there, is going to place or do or look in a men's physique competition. Or do you think overall it's just going to be um, a funny thing to watch? Now, the final story I want to talk about today, IFBB Elite Pro Michael Crizzo posted some insane physique updates today, um, which kind of further fuel my desire to see him compete in the IFBB Pro League. So he's not a member of the IFBB Pro League. He's a member of the other IFBB. And he posted these physique updates today where he looks to be in incredible shape. He's got great structure. He's got huge arms. He's got a small waist. Um, and I think he would be a tremendous asset to the IFBB if he were ever able to compete over here. Uh, but I don't know that he ever will. 
I think he would be seriously competitive in the Olympia, in the Arnold, just in the IFBB in general. I would really like to see him come over here, um, but I don't think that we will. But this series of physique updates from Michael was extremely impressive, and I wanted to share those with you, so give your thoughts in the comment section down below. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed already. We're on the road to a million subscribers. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.